Yeah. Well, um, before I start, I'd like for us all to, to have a word, word of prayer. Dear Father, thank you for bringing us here today in your house to learn about you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for bringing Jesus to us so that we so that we have hope, so that we have, have love. And, but thank you so much for all the many blessings you give. And just open, open the word up to us and, uh, so, that we can, so that we can be better, better students of you. Thank you for everything. Amen. Whenever, um, as we start here, I'd like to uh, turn to Second Chronicles uh, 31, 20, and 21. says, and thus did Ezekiel throughout all Judea and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. And every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the laws and in the commandments, to seek his God that he did with all his heart and prospered. Now, I'd like to uh, I'd like to to pray pray on this, dear Father. Just lift up the the word to us, and and help help us to understand. Help us to to be better followers of you. Amen. And I want to I want to look at this passage. And and in this passage, verses twenty and twenty one, what uh, we ask the question: What did Ezekiel have what did what did he believe now we know Ezekiel believed in God we know, we know that from our studies but he also he knew he knew the laws we know that and he knew the commandments but what is significant about how he believed he the what's significant is is that Ezekiel believed with all his heart he believed in this and and so so much that he did this in every work that he began and and i I think that's what we we need to do in our lives like like ezekiel we need to do this in every work that we start we need to be thinking how am i going to do this for for god how am i going to do it his way like when you when you get up in the morning, like whenever you think about all the things that you're you're doing in your day, you need to think about how how will this be pleasing to God? Ezekiel did this, and and he did this with all his heart. And he just he didn't just set out and say, "All right, I'm going to make this law. Everyone's going to to say give their." their ties to me, and I'm going to build this thing of my, my own personal concern, of, of my own interest to, to bury the people. No, he, he, didn't, he didn't do that. Instead, he turns it around. He, he brings it to God. He's like, he even takes the next step for, forward, and he goes, and in verse, if you look back in the chapter, in verse 3 it says, whenever it was time for the tithes, he also appointed the king's portion of his substance. He didn't just leave out his own responsibilities to the the tithes. In a way, he kind of was setting the example for the rest to follow. It wasn't just one of those deals where, all right, you guys do what the word says, and and, and I'll I'll just sit back because, you know, I'm the king. I I don't have to. No, instead, instead he gave. And if you read, it talks of how great the contributions were that the people gave to God. You have Ezekiel, he's over here, he, he's saying the example. You have the people, they're, they're believing, and they just, they work together to glorify God. And it, and it says that they did this, they did this with with, with their hearts. They did this with all their heart. And we find out that 
that whenever that by doing this, whenever they gave, it wasn't just like they were giving, they were giving gifts. They were giving they were giving more than those gifts. They were giving their heart, and their heart had a, had a value, it, and it's more valuable to God than just the gifts. And and but the the thing I I like. There's a little there's a little ending on this on this passage and it says it says and they pro and prospered the two the two words there and prospered not only were were the people who be obedient was Ezekiel also obedient but it wasn't just like that happened cuz God God has a purpose he has he has a purpose for everything and and whenever he Ezekiel believed whenever he believed in the word, whenever he believed and, and he, he set the example and the people set the example, they prospered. It's, I mean, it's, it, it's, uh, it's just amazing how whenever you, you set out, whenever you do God, God's will and you have that and have his beliefs in your heart, and, and try to do what he he wants you to do. Th things start things start to look up. I mean, th things will prosper. And I I know this because I've seen in my in my own life how how I started I set out to do something, and I I knew I knew I had to believe in God, but I, there was this. There's other stuff in my way, and I thought, well, maybe I'll do this, or maybe maybe I'll I'll do this first, and you know, there's still going to be, I can still do this later. But when, when, when you put God first, it, it's like it, it it opens new doors. It's like it's like the sun shines a little bit shine more brighter, and and, and things just they they work out better. It, it it's hard to explain, but it just it it. It happens. It's the way way it is when you put God first, and have Him in your heart, and uh, and in my in my Bible it has a little quote under this passage about Ezekiel. It goes, "Prosperity can only be found in faithfully following the word of the Lord." As we look at prosperity, we see we ask, "Where did it come from?" Well, we know where it came from. It came from him giving all his heart. But, but this, this heart, this heart thing, what, what exactly is it? You know, I mean, if we look, if we look in resources available to man, in, in Webster's Dictionary, it describes the heart as a hollow muscular organ of vertebrate animals by its rhythmic contraction, it asks like a force to pump, maintain the circulation of the blood. But is that all the heart is? Is all it is is a hollow organ? And and there's times when we might we might feel that that our heart is just a hollow organ. But but if we let Christ in, He can fill that hollow organ. He can fill it with with His with His blood with with His with His love. And he can pump that through us and help us, help us, help us through the days and help us to teach others and help us to believe stronger. But, but also, if you look in Webster's under, after the part there, if you look on down, down the list a little bit, it goes on to say, the heart is the essential or most vital part of something. Now, so our inner heart is the most vital part we have, according to what it says. But what does God have to say on the matter? Well, to help me understand, I like to look at David. In the Bible it says that David was a man's after God's own heart. It says that David trusted in God, and he trusted in God with his heart. And, and we have learned in the past how God lifted him up over his brothers and and God gave him victory in battle over his enemies 
all because of his heart. Now, today in our lives, we have many battles, just as, as David had, but, but we've, we, we've got an enemy. We, we're constantly fighting. We're constantly fighting Satan, and he, he aims at our hearts. He shoots for our hearts. He wants to have our hearts on his side, and, and we've struggled with him for a long time, and it's, it's, it's the battles that he's won. He's won battles in the past, but we got to think it's not about the past. It's about the future, and it's about the present. It's about right here and, and now, and, and we got to think about the here and now. And, and a phrase that, that helps me think about, about the, the, the here and now came from one, one of our presidents. I, I, I like very much um, in the words of Harry S. Truman, the buck stops here. It, it's not like we, we, gotta, we gotta end this. We gotta, we gotta make an ending point for, for Satan to get to quit coming into our lives. We gotta, we gotta tell him that he, we are not going to let him in our lives. And it makes us wonder, with this, with with keeping Satan out, how how hard will it be to keep him out? I'd like to, in uh, well, a little passage I like is First Peter, um, seven, one seven, and it says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire. Praise and honor the glory of God at the appearing of Jesus Christ. We need to praise and honor Christ. We need, we need to do this. And, but is it going to be easy? I mean, tried, tried with fire, those are powerful words. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be struggles blocking the path of our heart. But most importantly... Along the way, we need to have Christ in our hearts to lead us. As we look back on scriptures, we also see in Psalms 42, it tells of David's intense longing for God. In David, who is a man after God's own heart, we see how David's heart, had, because he believed, had much hope in it, in God, and what God it was going to do for him. He had faith and, and he had hope in his heart because he believed with his heart. Today, we can have hope in our hearts because of what Christ did. In this book I have, it talks about the hearts of men in the words of Christ. It, sa it says... Art and education may refine the taste, but they cannot purify the heart and regenerate the individual. In Christ's words were simple, yet profound, and yet they shook people, provoking either happy acceptance or violent rejection. People were never the same after listening. To him, the people who followed him were unique in their generation. They turned the world upside down because their hearts had been turned right side up. The world has never been the same. By Billy Graham. As I said, that, that book was written there by Billy Graham. That passage I read was written by Billy Graham. And he's right. Christ is the only thing that can purify the heart. And since he came, the world has never been the same. Without Christ in our hearts, without Christ to come to die for us, there would be no hope. That, that, that just sounds so sad to me, just like a world 
without hope, a world without Christ, it, it just sounds so terrible that you, you don't, I don't even want to think of it. I mean, that, there, that you couldn't have, have Christ and have, have his word and have his, his, his presence in your heart and have a tomorrow, that, that this is all there is. No, there, I mean, it, it's just so sad because if he wouldn't have died on that cross, if he wouldn't be living in our hearts, there would be no hope. But, but for those who do believe, for those who believe in Christ with, their, with all their heart, they, there will be hope. And, and as we look back at Ezekiel, as he believed in the Lord, he prospered. So there is a chance for us to have hope, and there is a chance for us to prosper. We just have to have him in our hearts. And, and to those who believe in Christ, there is much hope. There is much hope in our hearts. There is much hope for tomorrow because he came and he died for us. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for sending Christ to us. Thank you for, for being there for us. Thank you for your word, for, for giving us the word to learn about you, for giving us your presence in our hearts. And thank you for being there always. Thank you for the hope that you give us, that we have a tomorrow, that, that it's not all in vain, that there is a tomorrow because of the hope you give us in our hearts. And help us always to believe in you, in our hearts, with all of our heart. And, and help us to, to, to love you and help us. And thank you, dear Father, for all the many blessings you give to us. And, and please keep, keep the, the, evil, the evil in the world. Keep it from shooting at our heart and keep, keep our hearts pure and help them, help them to be devoted to you. And that all, all we do, we do it in our heart for you. And forgive us of our many evil sins. And thank you. Thank you for every, each and every blessing you give us. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.